my virtual classroom. And I don't know if any of the rest of you have created one of these, but I just think it's a ton of fun. And it's a way for you to create something that is you to the children. And if you'll notice, the avatar looks quite a bit like me. Although I will say my husband cut my hair yesterday, so I'm a little thin on the sides, but it's okay. So I'm gonna talk you through the steps of how to create a virtual classroom for yourself. Okay, next slide, please. So the first thing that, it can be done in Google Slides or it can be done in PowerPoint. Very simple to do. Um, if Don't worry about following my details exactly because there's 650 million videos on how to do it. But you're gonna wanna start by creating a background. And so if you're in Google Slides, you're gonna insert an image, you're gonna search the web, and you're gonna wanna look for walls and floor. And I just picked this walls and floor because I thought it was, you know, fairly classroom-like. And if you go to the next slide, please. Okay, and then you're gonna create your Bitmoji. Now, I'm in my 60s, and I had never created a Bitmoji, but what a lot of fun. Um, those people who are young are used to this stuff, and I know Facebook just released its avatar Facebook's got nothing on Bitmoji. Um, back in the day, some of us played with paper dolls. It's like creating your own paper doll that looks just like you. So um, if you go to the next slide, please. You go to a website, an app called Bitmoji, and you create your personal avatar. And you can pick the clothes, you can pick the glasses, you can pick the hair, you can pick the eye color and spend some time making it look like you. When I posted my virtual classroom, my kids went crazy. It's just like, you know, for a 64 year old woman to have a Bitmoji is pretty good to begin with, but it looks like me. And it felt like they could see me in my classroom again. So they really liked that. So you just, you just go to Bitmoji, you create your avatar. It becomes an extension on Google Chrome that you can click and your avatar can be sitting, standing, jumping, smiling, doing whatever. So that's how you create yourself. Okay, next slide, please. So then you start to decorate your classroom and you're just gonna insert, again, just images from the web, you know, in Google Images. So if you have a chalkboard or a whiteboard or, you know, make it look beautiful, make it be the classroom you always wanted it to be, or make it look like the classroom you have. Now, my classroom overlooks the heating equipment and it's just not a great view. So in my virtual classroom, I have a lovely view out my windows. The windows are basically in the same place. The whiteboard is basically in the same place. But you, when you look out, you do not see the heating element. All right, but you can, I mean, I worked through this whole crisis. I worked with probably the least comfortable tech teacher in my building and his virtual classroom beats mine. I mean, he put pencils on the desks and laptops and paintings on the wall. He just went crazy with this because it was something that was not so stressful a lot of what we've been doing is very stressful and very intense. This was sort of creative and fun, but it also is useful. Uh, next slide, please. And then the most important thing is you put things in your classroom that have embedded links. So we couldn't possibly have my classroom without Edulastic because I use it all the time. My kids were used to it before we went virtual. So it was a smooth transition there. Something that I haven't heard people talk about, and I'll put in my plug for my favorite thing about Edulastic, is that you can send comments to the children on each individual question. And I always start my comments with their name. And so I say, you know, Mary, you really need to go back and look at this question again. Remember when we whatever. And it's like you're talking to them and you're talking to them in private. 
So you're not, I teach high school, and if a kid makes a mistake, that's the worst thing on the planet. But if I can communicate to them personally through a comment on Edge Elastic, then when they do the redirect, they have, it's like I'm whispering in their ear. So that's a feature that, that I don't think anybody's mentioned today. So next slide, please. So these are just some samples that I found and literally the, the internet is piled up with them. The one in the upper left hand corner, if you click on the books on her bookshelf, those actually connect to the books. Um, somebody was talking about having um, reading to the students. This is the way that you could make that work. I love the one in the bottom left where it's the pictures of the, te the first grade teachers and it says, we miss you. As hard as this has been for the students, teachers love their kiddos. And you took the kiddos out of our world. And the, in my county, the county made the decision of saying, it's optional. You don't have to do any work if you don't want to. Well, at a high school level, that pretty much cut my participation down from 100 and something to seven. And I miss my kids. So this was a way to communicate with my kids. All right, next one, please. And this is back to mine. And you'll notice the, look at the beautiful view that does not look like West Virginia where I am, but it's still a nice view. And everything on the wall is a link, a link to Edge Elastic, a link to Khan Academy, a link down here to Ken Ken. A lot of math teachers today, if your kids aren't doing Ken Ken, which is what I call um, Sudoku on steroids, you need to check it out. I teach AP Computer Science. This was my first year of teaching that this year. And you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I have the three links to the places that those guys go. So have, do something creative, do something that nourishes you as a person. Take this summer and do things that make you feel as amazing as we all are as educators, because we truly are an amazing group of people.